Today I'm going to do a little review and uh, kind of an owner's manual type video for the Dudek Universal 1.1. I believe all this information will apply to any of the 1.1 models, but uh, double check your owner's manual just to be sure. Uh, there's a lot of things when I got this glider in the owner's manual that are kind of lost in translation. Uh, going from Polish to English, I believe. And it's not super clear exactly what configurations to put the glider in using the speed system and the trimmers. And there's also TST toggles, uh, which are tip steering toggles. And there's TEA, which is a torque effect adjusting line. Uh, and then there's the trimmers and the speed system. So... There's a lot of different features that are all awesome. I love this wing, but they're a little bit complex and not spelled out the greatest in the video. So I'm going to explain a little bit down here on the ground, and then we will go up in the air and do the rest. So first off, let's look at a riser, and we're just going to identify all the different parts and name them and label them. Now I don't have the owner's manual right in front of me, but I've read it enough times I think I remember all the terms properly. Okay, so here's the riser laid out. This is the front of it that faces away from you when you're flying. We're going to focus on the back of it because that's what you're looking at most of the time. So when you're flying, this is what you're going to see. So let's start with clip-in. When you first clip in, there's two options. There's the larger opening on the bottom, and then there's this higher up one. Now you can clip in your left side on the higher one if you want to uh, for torque effect. Um, if you have a motor that produces a lot of torque all the time, maybe that's a good idea. I don't do it on mine. I have a Air Conception Nitro, Nitro 200. Um, it doesn't warrant this enough. Uh, I think if I did this when I was off power, it would tend to the left too much, and I don't need that. All right, moving up, here's the trimmer system. Now when you buy it, there's probably a limiter I believe it's at 12 where the limiter is and that's fine to leave it there when you start um, you know once you get comfortable with the gl glider you should get, move that out of there so you can get the full use out of the speed system but we'll talk about when you remove that what you need to do in particular to adjust the speed system you just press this here and it slides up Now, when you're flying that's all under pressure so it happens very easily moving our way up we have our brake toggle with a nice magnet to keep it here. We always, before we launch, make sure that this line is clear all the way to the pulley. So there's no twists, this isn't wrapped around. A lot of times this can get wrapped around funny. And if you don't check it, it's not good when you get in the air. All right, other features of the riser. Um, you have your A lines labeled with the red. They're split A's, so if you wanna pull big ears, there's special ones to pull. And then for launch, you have your other tab. Uh, then you have your Bs, which are yellow. They're all together. Uh, your C risers, it has a little C labeled on it. It does not have the sewn colored tab on it. And then your D risers on the back of the wing is labeled in blue. Now there's a couple more things. Uh, when you get the wing, this is on there. This is called a TEA, or Torque Effect Adjuster. So what it is, is when you're in the air and you're cruising, if your glider is turning to the right all the time, you can adjust this line, and the way it works is you tie a knot in it. You can see I put a little sharpie mark. What I did is I took a sharpie with me up in the air, and then I went in cruise power with my trims out, and I pulled this line just enough to figure out how I was going straight. And then when I was going straight, I marked it with a sharpie and then when I got on the ground next time I tied a knot there and this plastic thing has a little v-shaped in cutout in it and when this is under pressure in the air you pull it and then you pull that so it hooks into the cutout now that'll hold a slight left turn to counteract your uh, P factor from your motor now I'll be honest with you I set this up and I haven't used it since I set it up. So take that for what it's worth. Now you can also use these as a tip steering line if you want to. There's many ways to tip steer on this. There's a torque effector adjust, torque effect adjuster. There's just half of your steering lines. And then the third one 
which isn't installed in your glider from the factory, or at least it wasn't for mine, are these. And these are called TST in the manual. Tip steering toggle is what it stands for. These are nice long toggles, so they hang a lot further down, they're more comfortable when you use them, and they only activate the tip steering on the glider. Um, there's certain times when you wanna only use tip steering, and we'll get into that shortly but this is what you use for that. Now you can use this at any time. There's no reason you can't use this in regular flight and trimmed in, but it's just not as effective as when you're trimmed out. Once again, this is something I, I have used on longer cross countries, it's pretty neat. But honestly, most of the time I just weight shift when I'm trimmed out, or if I need to do a little adjustment, I will reach up and just grab part of my, uh, the tip steering lines actually, that attach to the tip of the glider. So these are optional, you don't have to have them on, but and they have a nice little magnetic keeper here, it's orange. I do find, to be honest with you, that these lines get tangled up all the time. Uh, they're mechanically advantaged, you can see they have, they're not pulleys, but they're little, I don't know what you'd call them, but they act like a pulley to give you a mechanical advantage when you're turning. And that's great and all, but um, there's just a lot of line and it's routed in a way that it always seems to be getting tangled up on something. So, I don't know, I keep them on, I'm not gonna take them off, but it's just one thing to really pay attention to. Uh, once you have them on, you'll realize that when you're pre-flighting the glider, a lot of times that's gonna cause some tangles. Okay, so that's the risers. Uh, we will spread the wing out here, and we can look at the rest of it. Dudek sells this wing with a really nice stuff sack. I also got a nice backpack with mine. Um, and also a small wing bag that I carry in my motor at all times in case I have to land out somewhere. Something I've always done since I got this glider is I carry a carabiner, just regular climbing carabiner. It can even just be a cheap one. And I keep the risers tied together at all times when I'm not flying it. It really helps cut down on tangles and uh, a lot of people stick one riser through the other, which is great, but after a while they loosen up and it just falls apart. So. Something I always do, and then I leave it clipped on my wing bag when I'm not using it. So in the center of the glider, you're gonna see a black dot. That marks the center cell. There's also one on the trailing edge. Uh, on the leading edge here, you'll see this has nylon rods here that keep the form of the wing. Uh, these are really nice, they keep it inflated. You have to take care when you're packing them, but they're a really great feature on most modern gliders now. Um, in the second cell over from the center, there's a manufacturer's tag. It shows all the relevant information about your individual glider. It shows the data manufacturer on there and it shows all the specifications, the weight range and everything. So you're sure that it's this glider that you're talking about, not a different one that you might be confusing it with on some manual somewhere. I also wanted to just describe my motor just for uh, comparison's sake, uh, for weight and such when you're flying this wing. Like I said, it's a 25 and a half meter glider. Uh, I weigh about 162 pounds or so probably close to 170 with all the shoes and helmet and everything on um, then plus I have the Nitro 200 uh, it's the Delta model so that's 42 pounds with nothing on it but I have a tool kit and a reserve and I fly with a full tank of gas most of the time so that's what I'll be flying with today so I don't have a scale at home so I can't tell you what my all up weight is but hopefully that'll provide some reference for you Okay, so I have my motor all pre-flighted. I started it. I'm hooked up. I have all my safety checks done on my motor, my harness. Everything looks good. Now it's time to move on to the wing. Now we had it laid out pretty decent. I turned it a little bit to be square with the wind, or mostly square at least. And now it's time to just sort out the risers. So you pick up your riser off the ground, hold it by the bottom, walk back until it gets a little bit taut. Now you don't want to pull too hard or you'll roll up the tip of your wing. I like to grab each set of lines, pull the A's, make sure they're free. 
hook them with my finger and move my way onto the B's. They all look good and grab the C's. If you have any tangles, just kind of seesaw gently back and forth and they usually work themselves right out. Here's that tip steering line that you gotta watch out for. This one is nice now. And the D's are laying nice and straight. Okay, then I flip it like this to put some slack in the lines and lay it so the speed system is facing out. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the other side. Then we're gonna turn it around and uh, we'll catch you guys there to show you how to clip in. Okay, so now it comes time to clip in. So we're gonna pick up each riser. Now I like to hook my speed lines for my speed bar into my carabiner. So I always have them. Uh, it's a very common thing to not hook these up and then have them go into your prop. And that's not good, it's gonna cost you money. So I hook them on there, then it's a good reminder to set them up as I'm clipping in. So I take the riser, make sure it's facing the correct way, and then you want to clip it in. Again, if you decide it's right for you, you can clip your left one into the higher one and your right one into the lower. But you can play with that and determine if it's right for your motor. Now first we're going to hook up the speed system. If you don't have your speed bar hooked up, if you're a beginner, that's fine. You just don't worry about this part right now. You just hook the two Brummel clips together and make sure the line is free down to the pulley, which should be down by your butt. And make sure it's not looped around the riser and you should be good to go. All right, now we would usually do the same to the next one, but first I'm just gonna run through everything on one riser, then you can duplicate it with the other one for yourselves. So the safety check here is after you get it in, you do what's called door road break. The door is the carabiner, make sure it's clipped. Road, you're checking mostly the trimmer. This is the main thing to make sure it's trimmed in all the way if that's your intention. Um, and when you're starting out, you do want to trim in all the way on this unless there's some high winds. Um, as you progress in your skills, you can work your way out. I generally take off at six right now, but uh, today there's no wind and I want to demonstrate, so we'll take off at zero. And the rest of the road check is just looking over the whole riser to make sure nothing looks funny. Nothing's twisted, nothing's frayed, nothing looks strange. And then the last of the checklist, the brake, you grab your brake handle, make sure the line is clear down to the pulley so there's no obstructions, and then hook it up. And leave it hang nicely and do your check on the other side and uh, we'll catch you for takeoff. Okay, I am all hooked up and my safety checks are done on the wing. Now I'm going to get centered on the wing. I'm going to get everything ready to go. Then I'll start my engine, do a little short run up. Now I did a full run up before, but I like to give it a little bit before I start. And then uh, we're going to go up in the air. So I'm going to keep it quiet during the takeoff and I will pick it back up a couple hundred feet up. All right, I'm a couple thousand feet up here. Um, this should give me some time to explain this without being at full throttle. I, so far, have been flying at trims in since I took off. Now, uh, when you're flying trims in, you just use your regular brake handles. So you do your turns, just weight shift and pull that brake. Works real great. Now, as you progress, 
And if you want to cut into wind and get a little more sporty, you can trim out to, let's say, six. So I fly trimmed at six almost all the time. Uh, that You still use your regular brakes. just makes it a little more sporty. The takeoffs are a little faster. The landings are faster. And your turns are a little more snappy. We just hit a thermal there while I was turning. It felt weird. All right. Now you can trim all the way out to 12 and still use your use your regular brakes. Now I don't crank and yank and bank with my regular brakes on 12. They say you can, but I just don't feel comfortable trying it. It turns more sharp and more sporty. The brake pressures are more heavy. Okay, so now out to 12, that's where your limiter is from the factory. That's where you can use your regular brakes. Now, after you move your limiter off there, and you want to get some more speed, especially on a cross country or something like that, you can let your trimmers out. They go all the way out to 24 centimeters. Now, when you let them out, you have to use your tip steering at that point. So you can either use your tip toggles, your dedicated ones, or you can use your tip steering line if you follow the green line up there. That's the one that's hooked up to your toggle. You can just grab it with your finger. You can also use the GEA line, which I explained earlier goes into that little plastic buckle. That also pulls on the tip of your wing. I find it easiest most of the time to just grab the tip steering line and uh, pull it a little bit because most of the time you can really do what you need to do with weight shift when you're trimmed out because it's real sensitive. So now we're going to trim all the way out. Just press both the buckles, make sure they're going out symmetrically, let them all the way out. You're going to feel the wind really pick up in your face. We're going a lot faster. Now it's going to feel more bumpy in any bumps because you're going faster, but the wing is actually more stable in this position than turbulence more resistance to collapse. Without a turn, you can grab your tip line if you want to, and weight shift, do some course adjustments. Now, you're not looking for a steep, sharp turn when you're on full trip south. This is when you're in cross-country mode and you're just trying to change direction. You can make a, make a turn by pulling on that tip. So, like I said, most of the time, I just weight shift. All right, so we're really cruising. We're starting to get back to the farm, so I'm going to trim back in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trim down to six. This is where I usually fly the glider most of the time. Um, when I'm flying low, uh, I really like it. It's responsive but I still feel like it's slow enough to be safe and I can catch myself if I do anything stupid. Okay, now let's talk about the speed system. I'm trimmed out to six right now. Uh, this is how I usually fly the glider, as I said. Now, you need to remember if you're using your speed bar, you have to be trimmed out to at least six. You do not want to accelerate a glider that's trimmed all the way in. Uh, it leaves you susceptible to a frontal collapse and it's just not right. So make sure you're trimmed out to at least six. Now you also have to remember that when you hit your speed bar, you don't use your regular brakes. So let's throw our regular brakes. We can get our tips in hand. We don't have our brakes, and now we're going to hit the speed system. So there's full speed bar. We're cooking along pretty good. We're going to slow up. Now you can also use your seed bar when you're trimmed out all the way too to get full speed. Let's do that quick. We don't have a ton of altitude here, so I'm going to get straight and level with my trims out first. We're going to keep the same heading here. We're going 37 right now. If I crank the seed bar all the way,
It only got up to 38, so it does very little when you're trimmed all the way out. To be quite honest, the speed bar does not much on this wing. Almost all the speed in this uh, universal is all in the trimmers. It has this huge trim range, and as you can see, it's a very short range here that the speed bar even pulls when it's pulled completely. So it's more on there just to, I think, learn about speed bar and understand how it works. But the reality is it gets you maybe a mile or two an hour or more. We're trimmed into six right now. I'm just messing around with the speed bar down here. Making it, using it to lose some altitude. Okay, so that's all the functions of the trimmers and the feed system. Okay, so we're about a thousand feet up. I'm just going to do a power off glide back down to the airstrip. Overall, the Universal is an awesome wing. I'm so happy with it. Uh, I think it's the best wing out there to start out with. Uh, I'm never going to get tired of it. I'm not going to get rid of this wing if I can help it. Even if I upgrade, I'll keep it for cross country. I just think it's so useful. Only thing we didn't cover, I guess, was the torque effect adjuster, which is kind of hiding here. Uh, that's the one I explained on the ground. It has a little knot you tie in the line. Um, like I said, I just never use it. So, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just pull in the line to counteract the amount of torque you have with your motor. I'm very excited to use this for some free flight. I've done some just sled runs down local hills here, but I finally bought a nice harness so I can actually do some free flight with this wing because uh, Dudek touts it. The reason they call it the Universal is because it can be used for powered or unpowered flight easily. And so I'm looking forward to seeing how it does. We're going to try to do a little bit of a swoop landing here see how the wind's doing. Yeah, I think we can start cutting it now. I hope you guys found that video useful whether you have a universal or you're shopping for one uh, it's a great wing I love it so much I'm sure there's something I missed in the video but I tried to be pretty comprehensive uh, if there is any more questions you want more clarity please leave a comment down below and I'll answer whatever I can and otherwise I'm sure there'll be some other universal owners chiming in as well so I hope you enjoy it it's a great wing and I highly recommend purchasing one so until next time please subscribe like this video and leave a comment down below. We'll see you next time.